Do you struggle to write interesting melodies that are going to keep your listener engaged for a long period of time? I think we all do to some degree, but today I've got some amazing tricks that are going to help you do this in a simple and satisfying way. So stick around. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about polyrhythms, polymeters, cross rhythms. You've probably heard some of this terminology. They're generally referring to the same thing. They're slightly different and I'll define them a little bit later. But what we're talking about is some evolving melodies that are going to keep your listeners locked in. These are patterns that evolve differently to the standard 4-4 timing of our house and techno beats, which creates really interesting and engaging rhythmic and melodic sequences. Just quickly, if you like the track that's playing, it's a new one of mine on Aral. There's a link in the description to Beatport and Spotify. If you want to go and support it, that would be much appreciated. And as always, if you want to grab the project files for this video, there's a link in the description to Patreon. It's one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week. Now let's jump into Ableton and make some rhythm. All right, so here we are inside Ableton and I've put together a little kind of deep house beat to show some of these polyrhythms, polymeters. So actually first things first, let's just define what a polymeter is and what a polyrhythm is. Now I guess like the standard way that people would describe what I'm gonna show you is a polyrhythm, although I'm pretty sure that's not exactly right. A polyrhythm would be if we had a beat like this that was going over a 4-4 time signature and we were playing something that was on like a triplet time signature, which is one thing I'm gonna show you. Now I think what a polymeter is, is when we have basically like things happening over different loop lengths and the polymeter is the way that they're interacting. Let me know in the comments if that's right, but I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna say polyrhythm because it's easier and um, everyone knows what I'm talking about. So I'm not really a stickler for the technical language of things. As long as we can communicate and everyone knows what we're talking about, then good. <laughs> so this is the beat. So then we have also this little stab here, which just happens at the end of every four bars. And then we've got a little break here, and then we bring in a string just to kind of switch things up. Right, so the kind of, I guess the problem that we're facing here is that we're starting to make an arrangement. We're try starting to extend things out, but it's pretty boring. Everything's a bit samey. So what I'm going to show you is how to use these polyrhythms to kind of turn something like this, that's like a 32 bar loop into something that's quite fluid and organic and kind of changing and how you can do that with actually very few elements. So I feel like this is like a pretty good starting point like of a track um, in this kind of deep house style. You really don't need too much more than this. So what we can do, I'm going to start with this mid pluck. Okay, so we've got a sound here. Just coming from vital, couple of saw waves, one's pitched down an octave, some chorus, some distortion, pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. Now, what I'm gonna do is we'll switch to this view. So we're gonna play in G, we're in G minor. So this pattern here, very common and sounds pretty cool. So if we were to go along our arrangement, It's interacting quite nicely with some of these things that are happening on the downbeat and the offbeats, but it's still looping over one bar, which is kind of not really extending the length of the loop or the length that we can feel in the loop, right? So what I'm going to do is take this, bring this over here, just drag it out along the length of this arrangement, but we can see that this is just one bar loop, right? Now, to make this longer, all we actually have to do is bring this in by one beat, okay? So now we're looping, well, essentially, we're just looping that, but the reason why that's gonna sound interesting 
is because the relative timing to all of these other things that are happening on the 4-4 grid is going to be constantly changing. So in this bar here, we're playing that pattern. But in this bar here, the timing has shifted. So that's going to give us this really interesting effect relative to the other elements in the arrangement. So that sounds really cool, but it is kind of playing independently of the other things. Something that we can do really easily to have it kind of interact with the 4-4 timing of the other elements is by turning on some sidechain. So because these are not happening like on that 4-4 pattern, this one's going to be kind of sidechained a little bit by the tail of the kick, right? This one's going to be sidechained. This one, the end of it's going to be cut off by the sidechain. So, and then back again, the tail of the start of this is going to be sidechained a little bit. So now let's listen to it with some sidechain. much more kind of in sync but moving from the rest of the arrangement okay so what we can do here i'll just assign this macro to the filter cutoff here we go okay all right so now we can just add in a little bit of automation Now we've got a really interesting way to move this arrangement on and just kind of keep using this to build up this tension and release but it sounds much less loopy so the magic really happens is when we start to have multiple elements doing this kind of shifted timing type thing right so we've got that i'm gonna show you this little sequence that i've created it's also in g minor it's sitting in a different place in the frequency spectrum from this mid pluck so if i just solo both of these this is the pattern that i've created so g minor is playing d down an octave and then up to the g but if i'm just to play the g here this is sitting a bit higher right so these are kind of able to interact together there's space for both of them all right so this is how this sequence sounds. Right, so what we can do, I'll just turn off this mid pluck and we'll listen to it. So we're still having the same kind of issue where it's feeling a little bit disconnected from the timing of everything else. So again, I'm going to put on some side chain with kickstart here. I'll use this classic chain setting. Now what we can do to change the feel of this is just drag it to a different timing. So what we've got here, we're playing it over a little less than half a bar. So if I change it to half a bar, then it's going to be very repetitive. It feels very loopy, right? If we change it a little bit further, So any of those timings can work, but the point is to have them shifted off the kind of standard 4-4 grid, right? So what I might do is just bring it back and then we can listen to how it interacts with this mid pluck. So that's actually, it's almost, it's two elements, but it almost sounds like too much, right? So we can kind of change that up with our timing. So this is playing less. So 
So it feels like there's a little bit more space for both of them. One more thing that we could try is instead of having the stab happening at the end of every two bars, just turn off the sequence, we could try putting the stab at some kind of interesting timing. So I think I've prepared something here. I will drag this out. So we've got our four bars. Okay, so we've got our stab at the end of every four bars. So let's do that over every three bars. Or even over every, I don't know, two and a half bars. So I think this type of thing might actually work better if we have something that's keeping the original timing. So what we could then try and do is maybe use this sequence to maintain the original timing. So let's just break that loop and bring this here. I feel like this might fit a bit nicer like that. It was just off the grid. Cool. So we're still using the same loop length. Consolidate it. Uh, what we could even do is take the sequence from here, maybe have it play twice at the end of this bar. So that's kind of adding some consistency, but also with the shifted rhythm. So it's, you know, you can, there's so many really interesting and easy opportunities to create differentiation in your patterns here. Now we can also do this with percussion. So what I've got here is a rim. And the first thing I programmed was this rim pattern going over one bar. So just turn off some of these. So it works with the beat, but it's very repetitive, right? So we could do our little trick of changing the timing, but what I'm actually gonna do here is change the grid. So if I show you here, the drip triplet grid, I've moved these off of the standard grid. Now looking at the triplet grid, so that means that each of these is divisible by three as opposed to divisible by four. So when we shift it back to the standard four, four grid, you'll see that these are now off timing. So it kind of sounds like just really swung when you compare it. All right, so that's cool. But let's combine it with both aspects. So let's take this to one and a half bars. Maybe a bit less. And of course, okay, we've got our side chain, so let's just bring it down a little bit to set it into the groove. So now we've got something that's like always evolving, right? This is also, this works really well with toms as like a nice kind of mid-range rhythmic element to work with your bass line, just subtle. Generally, these elements work quite well if they're subtle, low in the mix. Nice. So that's some ideas about how we can use polyrhythms and polymeters to extend out our loops and make things feel like they're evolving and a little bit more engaging and intricate, but without really doing too much more work. It's basically by shifting the way that these elements interact with one another to create really interesting and unexpected uh, combinations of sound. So obviously the key to getting this to work is using the different timings, but also using sounds that are different but complementary. So that's going to create really enjoyable, engaging interactions when they play at those different rhythms and those different timings. As always, if you want to grab the project files for this, you can do so from Patreon. There's a link in the description. So go grab that. 
There's loads of project files on there for <laughs> loads of different stuff. Um, also, if you're interested, this pretty much this whole beat is made up from samples from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House. There's a link up here if you want to go and grab a copy of that. All right, guys, there you go. I hope you find that interesting and hopefully it gave you some inspiration for your next track. If you like this style of music, then you're probably going to really like my Fader Pro course. It's out now. There's a link in the description. Use the code DILBYDEEP at checkout to get 20% off. That's an exclusive discount for viewers of the channel. Other than that, you can check out this playlist. You're going to find something there that you like. And that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.